In this example, we're going to analyze a recursively defined sequence. For our recursively defined sequence, we're going to say that the first term of the sequence will be 0, and every term after that is going to be the square root of 6 plus the previous term. This will be for all n is greater than or equal to 1. So just as an example, this means that the first term will be 0, the next term will be the square root of 6 plus 0, the next term will be the square root of 6 plus the square root of 6. The next term will be the square root of 6 plus the square root of 6 plus the square root of 6, and so forth and so on. Now the question that we're going to pose is, does the sequence converge or diverge? And typically, a question that we're going to ask for sequences is, if the sequence does converge, to what value does it converge? Now, in order for us to do so, we are going to need to take the limit, as n goes to infinity, of this recursively defined sequence. Now, what we're going to do for a moment is assume that the limit exists. If you assume that the limit exists, you'll be able to do one of two things, determine its value or come up with a contradiction. If you make an assumption and then wind up with a contradiction, that means that you're, or you were wrong with your assumption, therefore the limit does not exist, <coughs> so the sequence would diverge. Otherwise, if you make the assumption and then show what it's equal to, you've proved that the sequence converges. So for just a moment, we're going to assume that the limit exists, and we're going to call it L. Now, based on the recursive definition, we said a sub n plus 1 is equal to the square root of 6 plus a sub n. What we're going to do is take the limit as n goes to infinity of both sides of this equation. Now, we've already assumed that the limit exists, and we've referred to it as L. It shouldn't matter if we're talking about the n plus 1th term or the nth term. n is going to infinity in both of these cases. So what that tells us is that the left-hand side will converge to L, and this part of the right-hand side will converge to L as well. This gives you an equation in terms of L that you should be able to solve for L. The way that we'll solve for L is square both sides to eliminate the radical, and then get a zero on one side since we're now dealing with something that is quadratic. This happens to factor pretty nicely, so let's do so. That'll be L minus 3, L plus 2, equal to zero. This lets us know that one of two things is possible, either L is equal to 3, or L is equal to negative 2. Now with that in mind, if we take a look back at the original problem, every single term of the sequence was positive. Not only was it positive, but they were all increasing from values that were slightly under 3. Now none of the algebra would have changed here if I had defined this as the negative square root. If this had been defined as the negative square root, we would have the limit of the sequence right here. But because it was defined as the positive square root, you have the value right here. So we can draw the conclusion. The sequence converges to 3. Now there is another way that we can convince ourselves of the truthiness of this statement, and it'll be through the use of the graphing calculator. So what we're going to do is type in this sequence exactly. Our first term was 0. To get future terms, we wanted to take the square root of 6 plus the previous statement. You can get the previous statement on your calculator by pressing second followed by the negative sign. So this will give you the square root of 6 plus the previous answer. So this will be the square root of 6 plus 0. This will be the square root of 6 plus the square root of 6, and so forth, and so on, and so forth, and so on. 
By pressing enter over and over, we're seeing subsequent terms of the sequence until eventually the calculator can't tell the difference between our number and the number 3. Now, this doesn't prove that the limit is 3. This is a good way to convince ourselves that 3 is the correct answer. The work that we showed is how we actually prove that the sequence converges to 3.